American Samoa is a U.S. territory in the South Pacific. Only 46,000 people live on its five major islands. No large islands anywhere nearby. New Zealand and Hawaii are both more than 3,000 kilometers away. Yet despite its small population and seclusion, you may already know that over 30 athletes from there have made it to the NFL, giving them the highest rate of success of any U.S. state or territory for landing players in the top American football league. But what about baseball? After all, it is a U.S. territory, so you can rightly assume that all the major American sports have been introduced there. And baseball does have a presence there. But there are several reasons why we haven't seen them excel in baseball the way they have in football. And don't confuse American Samoa with the nation of Samoa. The independent state of Samoa, previously known as Western Samoa, is its own country. Even though the two Samoas share a common language and culture, they have very different sports preferences. American Samoa prefers American sports, whereas Samoa is more influenced by New Zealand, so rugby and cricket are the top sports there. So while I may say Samoa or Samoan here, I'll be referring to the U.S. territory throughout the video. The Samoan Islands were split in 1889 and the eastern group of islands became a U.S. territory. A year later, the U.S. Navy came in and set up a naval station. There's no record of baseball being played at this time, but we can guess that some of the sailors who made the trip out there probably brought bats, gloves, and balls with them, since that's what happened everywhere the U.S. military visited back in those days, including several Pacific islands. Though we can assume that baseball was introduced to the Samoans at that time, it doesn't seem to have been played much at all during the first half of the 20th century. Perhaps this is because the natives already had their own bat and ball sport. They had learned cricket from English missionaries who had visited the islands prior to them becoming a U.S. territory. They made some changes to the rules and equipment, and this new form of cricket came to be known as Kilikiti, and today it's still considered the national sport of Samoa, and played on several other Pacific islands. During World War II, thousands of Marines were stationed on the Samoan islands. It's said that during the war the U.S. Marines outnumbered the natives. If there were any ball games played involving Marines and Samoans, it doesn't seem to be recorded anywhere. Maybe the Marines didn't bring any baseball equipment with them. Maybe they didn't have the time. Or maybe the Marines played ball among themselves while the Samoans played Kilikiti. In 1968, left-handed first baseman Tony Salita became the first player from Samoa to play in Major League Baseball. He played a total of seven seasons between 1968 and 1979, playing in over 500 games, career 255 average, and 50 home runs. He had more success in NPB from 1980 to 83 with the Nippon Ham Fighters, where he hit over 150 home runs. Salita was born in American Samoa and lived there till he was eight. Then his family moved to the U.S. where he joined Little League and developed into a talented ball player. During his early childhood years in Samoa, baseball was hardly played. Equipment was in short supply because the Americans didn't have a large presence there, like they did on some other islands. But he had played Kilikiti, so he was able to transfer some of his playing skills to the diamond. After his retirement from baseball, Salita returned to his home islands to encourage kids to take up baseball and help them become successful. Throughout the 1980s, baseball on the islands grew, and great efforts were made to break the young players out of their isolation from the rest of the baseball world. In 1987, Salita brought a Samoan Little League team to Taiwan. In 88, he took a senior league team to Hawaii, and the year after that, he led another team to Los Angeles. Everything was looking up for baseball in Samoa, but in 1990, Tony Salita was tragically murdered at the age of 43. His name is the one most associated with baseball in American Samoa today, and the programs he put in place continue today. Though after his death, the sport's progress slowed down and never really picked up again until now. There have been other players from the islands to go on and play college ball in the U.S. and make it to the minors, but none of them came close to the major league level. Some Americans of Samoan descent have played in MLB, but none of them have any strong connections to the islands. Another player worth mentioning is Mathis Huff. He was born in American Samoa and spent his early years there before moving to the U.S., where he played high school and college ball. He went on to play in the Pioneer League where he won a batting title and was named a two-time All-Star DH. In 1990, he went to Taiwan and played in the inaugural CPBL season with the Wei Chuan Dragons. There was no MVP given out that year, but he was definitely the best hitter, leading the league in on-base percentage and slugging, second in batting average and RBI. He played two more years with the Dragons and later played on American Samoa's national team. Young ball players growing up in American Samoa face an uphill battle trying to reach the top levels of professional baseball. Unlike in American football where size or speed alone can land you a spot on a major U.S. college team, baseball requires certain skills that can only be obtained through competition. With a population of under 50,000, that competition is limited. There are no other baseball playing islands nearby, so they have to do some serious traveling to get good international competition. And that costs money, something they don't always have. To make matters worse, the baseball season there is extremely short. High schools usually only play six to eight games, and that's their season. The kids need more playing time, and it would help a lot if they could get off the island to face some tougher competition. But that will take the help of someone with money, a love for the game, and a connection to the islands. 
Salita was the perfect guy for that role, an ex-major leaguer born in Samoa who wanted children there to have the same opportunities he had. American Samoa is a poor territory with high unemployment. A lot of Samoans move off the islands to Hawaii or the U.S. mainland and earn a better living. In fact, it has the highest rate of military service of any U.S. state or territory. Some of them move back, some of them don't. What would be great is if some Samoans with a love for baseball decided to use some of the money they've earned overseas to help grow the game back in their home territory. Despite the overwhelming popularity of American football in the islands, Little League Baseball is thriving there, recently seeing the number of participants grow from around 200 to as many as 500. High school baseball does quite well, and so does softball for girls. So it is being played there, one of their biggest sports, even though it's nowhere near being the top sport. Two ball players from American Samoa who just graduated high school have just begun playing college ball in California. Two more Samoans are expected to join them next year, as well as three girls who will play college softball. And their world ranking is a lot higher than you would expect. They were up three spots in the last WBSC ranking that just came out last month, tied at number 45 with Belarus, one place behind Uganda, and one place ahead of New Zealand. At the 2019 Under-18 Baseball World Cup Regional Championships in Guam, the American Samoa team beat New Zealand and the host nation on their way to a silver medal. If youth participation numbers continue to rise, we could see more performances like this. Will that lead to stronger showings for the national team and more Samoan prospects in the major league system? Only time will tell. Anyway, that's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.